Along with errand ground searches, looking at surveillance video, talking with witnesses, that sort of thing, pinging cellular devices is just one more tool in the toolbox that investigators have for finding missing persons. Two recent high profile missing persons cases in Northern California in both searches, investigators pinged the cell phones of the people who disappeared. It is one of the primary tools that law enforcement does use today. Jim Cook of Premier Cellular Mapping and Analytics, helping us understand how ping information is obtained and processed based on his years of experience helping law enforcement. My assistance in the matter is interpreting the information that uh, comes back from uh, the carrier. Cook, not involved with the searches for 16-year-old Kylie Rodney or missing couple Juan Zavala and Jeanette Pantoja, explains getting data from missing person cell phones starts with an exigency protocol or investigators proving they need cell phone data because someone's life or safety are at extreme risk. They will request the carrier to ping the device. That means a signal goes out to the device associated with the person's number. And based upon the device being on, it will yield a location via GPS with what they call a degree of accuracy. That degree of accuracy could be 5 meters or 500 meters or even unknown. Investigators also getting the antenna or cell site that the phone connected to, which helps them know which way to focus their search. The more pings or the more connections, um, the better the values for law enforcement. But time is of the essence as battery strength fades, according to Cook. The first few hours, if you will, are probably the most critical in trying to establish that location of where that device was when it was last on. Investigators needing and using as many pieces of information they can get to help find missing people. And they can look back at uh, within roughly about a 48 hour period the, the history of that device, both based upon its data connections, its uh, text messages, as well as its calls. Cook says mobile devices are of great help in tracking the locations of people who are lost. We all have that, you know, little square box we all carry with us. It's an umbilical cord. But as advanced as they are, they too come with limitations. And some good ideas for families or people who often hike outdoors. Have a device tracking app installed and on on your phone. That information can also help investigators zero in on your location if you're lost. Bring a backup power source. Remember, those pings don't work unless the device has power. And finally, if you end up hurt and you are in a place where you're in a compromising position, if you can, send your friends or loved ones a text message versus a phone call because that is more likely to go through, especially in remote areas. Reporting live now, Melanie Wingo, KCRA 3 News.